thing, but what I have been able, oh, here, what I uh, have a background in is book publishing. I started over 20 years ago. I live in Oakland, California uh, in the United States. Um, I've been to Israel though. Um, uh, my mother was actually born in Herzliya and my husband's mother was born in Jerusalem. Um, and yeah, we live here in the United States. Um, uh, but we have been back to visit with our, I'm a mom of three girls myself. Uh, I really quickly um, grew up very, very fast in traditional publishing, working at brands. So let me find my presentation. Um, here we go. Here it is. Okay. So I, um, can everyone see that? You can? Yes. Okay, great. I think there's a way that I've done this before where I can do... Um, uh, view, it, I'll just let it go, um, view as a, as a, but this is fine. Sorry if you're seeing other things. Okay, so this is me. I'm the publisher and founder. I'll be really quick. I already said I've worked at Chronicle Books, Cameron and Company, Tensmead. Maybe you guys know of Moleskin Journals. Uh, they are founded in Italy, uh, but huge distribution. And my background is selling books to nationally wide, nationwide booksellers and accounts such as Target, Costco, Sam's Club. Uh, these are all uh, net recognized around the world. Um, and I've sold into them probably every single store in the United States that has a shopping cart. Even when Bar Babies R Us was around, I have sold to it, Bye Bye Baby. Um, and so my background is sort of not just is looking at a book as a product, um, marketing, sales, and distribution. Um, and what today I'm going to give you um, really a brief overview after talking to Natalie is that everyone is sort of like confused about the publishing space because it has really changed with um, Amazon and self publishing. So um, I've been seeing, there was an article on my company and myself and Business Insider, but my books have been on the Today Show, have been, I did a cookbook called 52 Shabbats, which uh, was seen in the New York Times, uh, LA Times, the Washington Post as well. We have already won awards and just mind you, I'm only in going into year four of a business and already have been um, best-selling and award-winning titles. Um, we are already at 50 titles. And how do we do this? Uh, my company is, uh, is insiders, our publishing insiders. So we really understand how to make a book and not because anyone can honestly these days write something, turn it into a PDF, upload it on Amazon and sell it. So that is not, so what today is sort of talking to you, what is your path? What is your why is sort of what I come to. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of podcasters, people who maybe are fed up with the traditional world, got, had, a, had traditional publishing, had an agent, didn't have an agent, can't wait because they have a business and a speaking platform. So I work with all kinds of uh, artists, people who also want to own their IP, don't want to sell their art. So there's a lot of reasons why um, I came up with this concept and an idea. I do a lot of children's work as well as adult, all nonfiction, no memoir, no novel. Um, I do what I call business light, where we, we take story and narrative and we change it into more of like a self-help. I'm really interested in that, but that is very different than the memoir genre. So publishing a book, the different ways to get it done. So I think my thing is there's, there's hybrid publishing, which there's self-publishing, there's traditional publishing. And then what I've sort of kind of coined called partnership publishing, and I'll go into that, but um, what happened essentially is I was working at Chronicle Books, I was working at Cameron and Company and big, big brands such as Splenda or Sutter Homes Wine, the, uh, the, the uh, Food Network, I, I worked on Top Chef's Cookbook, would get a publishing deal, but there was al it was always hybrid in the contract. I, I've been quoted in this that a traditional uh, publishing contract doesn't mean it's wholesome, meaning there's maybe, for example, when we did the Top Chef Cookbook, the network has to buy back 10,000 copies of that book. So there's always some kind of monetary exchange. And um, so self-publishing has kind of emerged for a lot of people. And in some genres, it really actually has worked like um, Insta poetry, romance. I've actually seen some really interesting um, data on uh, that, that genre in self-publishing. So publishing a book's a process. So if anyone here, which you can put in the chat is interested in publishing a book, 
what does that even look like and what does that even mean? So you have the creative development and the project management, which I think when you're in self-publishing, you don't actually realize, oh my God, there's a whole part of the publishing process. Like, what is this? Because like, for example, 52 Shabbats, like it takes a lot to like make the cover, make it embossed. What, what should be the trim size? You know, how many photos should it have? Should it have like, what is the shot list? Like all of those things are part of the creative development and the project management. The design and layout is an aspect, the editorial, um, the production. So I kind of call it a circle um, within also sales and distribution, uh, the final product. So you have your traditional publishing, which I've worked for 10 Speed Press, which now is an imprint of Random House, uh, Chronicle Books. I've done consulting with Simon & Schuster, um, Random House, Hachette. These are just some of the big guys, Macmillan. And when they choose a book, you know, traditional publishers acquire projects from agents. It's very rare if they, uh, if you're on, in the slush pile. And, they, and the agents represent the, the project. Uh, the editors can negotiate contracts or bids. And sometimes there's, and more than often, there's an auction for the rights to the book. Um, author does sign over most creative rights to the intellectual property. That is a big, big part of traditional publishing. Um, author might have some rights to consult, but ultimately they're giving over their rights to a publishing house. Um, and then, you know, author's profits, just so that you know, royalties are typically less than 10% of net profits, typically. Like you might see a big named author that gets more, whether that's Danielle Steele or JK Rowling's, but I'm going off of just typical. Self-publishing. So this is, uh, there's no choosing a book, right? Kindle, Amazon Publishing, Scribe, Blurb, Lulu, Kobo are just some of them. Um, but the author doesn't have to sign any rights. You can get it done really quick. There's a lot of services. 100% um, of the profits go to the author. If you ever sign a contract or do some part of self-publishing deal and don't get 100% of the profits, that's a red flag. Please DM me. I'm very active on LinkedIn. If you uh, want and you get into a, like, a, oh, I'm spending $10,000 with this service and they're going to take X amount of cut, please, 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 please reach out to me because I might go, oh, that's a red flag. There was a huge study and I'm part of a, a committee now, a, a watch committee in publishing on ethical hybrid or partnership where, because they're, they're in, at least in the United States, it's gotten really gray on what to spend. And out of the UK, there was a study that they're basically like, all hybrid is bad. And that's not really the case. It's at all, especially in the United States, it's more about uh, what I tell authors, do your research and, and ask the right questions. So that's why we're gonna have five minutes, I guess here. But what is hybrid publishing? So these are some really good companies that do it. She Writes Press, Girl Friday Productions, Greenleaf, Scribe, Am Amplify. And um, hybrid publishers are looking both for content and, and an author is willing to pay into the publishing program. Um, but but the author retains all rights to their intellectual property. So a lot of people, like if you have a big speaking platform, you're on TEDx speaker, like you need books. One of these might be really, really beneficial for you because you're going to get a great product. You're going to get a great brand and um, you can't wait for a traditional deal, which can take up to three to five years. Um, and you're getting this support. That said, you need to really talk to them about their sales and distribution um, what side you're going to be on, how much support you're going to get. So all of that is really, really important. So I decided to sort of think about partnership publishing in a different way. Um, I come from custom publishing from Chronicle or Cameron Books, again, where wineries are paying us, are coming to the table with photography, are paying us to do the books, and then we're offering it into the trade. So I decided so just offer that to both brands as the regular person, like you are going to pay for us to create a book, right? Just, but it's really literally just offset costs. So like example here, I did this book called Malka's Notebook that was seen in Hadassah Magazine. So it, it was came to me as a memoir and a prose. And I was like, no one is gonna buy that. And so you come to us to go, what could this be? And the artist is in Israel and did not want his, the art was acquired by this woman here in the United States. And she didn't want to sell this to a publisher. She wants to own the art. She also has a film 
which is unreal, absolutely gorgeous. Just won a, um, actually in Israel, a short film award uh, called A Day Before the Creation. So why would she sell the art? But what we did is we stripped the entire memoir with our developmental editor and we matched her words to every single art piece. And it's, it's, abso it's absolutely gorgeous. So part of what we do is we work with museums, with artists and people who don't want to get their IP acquired. We also have an ability to create things that are very different that an Amazon or self-publishing couldn't do. For example, this is a lift a flap parenting book. So, or uh, uh, postpartum, she, the, uh, she, Raquel Kelly was a producer for E! She had this great idea, tons of connections in the United States and her agent, they were not, no one wanted to kind of take on the project. And she believed in it so much that she approached us and we said we could do it. So it's a lift a flat book for moms. Like you get postpartum depression. The idea is where'd I go? Um, this just came out. It's unreal and really beautiful. We hire the illustrator um, and we do all that work. We can also take, she's a parenting coach. We can take her simple, simple concepts and ideas and just make really gorgeous, actually Sue Groner is Jewish. She's really awesome. She lives in New York and, um, you know, make really a beautiful book of all of her simple tips and, you know, add a few little illustrations. It's lay flat. It's got a ribbon and she can use this also in with her patients, but it also gives her credibility in the trade. So that's sort of a lot of what I do. Um, how publishing works. I kind of did that. Like you see how my cute little slide, if you go over, you know, manuscript development, copy editing and proofing, design and layout is cover design, interior design, typesetting, art direction, illustration and photography. I'm sure you did not realize you know this much about a book. Production is package construction, printer relationships, competitive pricing. So that's really important. Um, we just pass off our costs. So for example, you might go, well, I don't really want to pay that creative fee or I didn't want to do that. I would get that all the time. And then they go to a printer and they're like, oh my God, it's going to cost me $9 a book to print this thing. I'm going to talk only in US dollars. Um, and we're able to get the book for $4 landed with a tariff because we have big terms. We print like you know, we do a lot of our own publishing. Um, we come up with our own concepts and our own ideas. A lot of my children's books um, are us, and that's also a secret in publishing. Um, some of the stuff we, like National Geographic, Scholastic, Chronicle, like we're editors and writers and thinkers ourselves. So part of our lists are our own things. So we'll, we'll have those relationships with, with printers. Um, wholesale distribution. So this is really a difference between my brand and, or my, and my publishing house. I was, I was an insider and I was never going to publish a book without distribution. So oftentimes a self-published author, you can't get distribution because you're not going to cultivate like a, my idea was like, let's bring a lot of this good content together as a collective so that we could massively come up with a list where we would be taken seriously, could grow to half a million very quickly to a million dollar business, and which is what business why Business Insider interviewed me. We grew last year to close to one million dollars uh, in of, of a bit of a business, and the reason was that um, I have a big enough list, a big enough uh, so that you know larger retails would take us seriously as well as wholesale distribution, which is really a lot of what I understand and what I believe because. In the end, Amazon is an important piece of the pie here from a market share, but they're not the only piece of the pie. And um, it's really good to be aware of where else you can go and you need, you know, warehousing and, you know, fulfillment, which is what we do. Um, so that's sort of the final product is the book, right? There's my cute little icon. So we've got the publishing pass, traditional self hybrid and partnership. And partnership publishing for me is define a mission and vision of its publishing program. So that's what I, I'm like almost coming out with my own publishing standards. You have to vet submissions, you have to publish. So like, I just got someone say, but I bought my own ISBN. 
um, we like their manuscript. It hasn't even been illustrated. It's a children's book. Can I use it? I'm like, no, you cannot. So like the idea is that published to industry standards. What does that mean? I public, I, my books will stand hold of a Hachette, a Workman, a Chronicle, uh, Abrams, like just as high is my standard in my brand as it would a large house or any house. Um, and I ensure that because um, and pursue and manage a range of publishing rights. So like, let's say there are people that we will um, do sub rights for them, sell in different languages. I'm very interested in talking. I just talked to an Israeli publisher, for example, talking about other product they're publishing, how to bring it over to the United States. Um, provide marketing and publicity services and include outreach. We do all of that. We, as you can see, uh, and national reviews demonstrate respectable sales, which I definitely, we have, we, our books have already been in major retailers across the country uh, from a, from our own brand, from Costco to Target to um, Central Markets, which is a grocery store down in Texas. Um, and we pay authors higher than standard royalties. Our, um, and between 20 and 50% is what our, my royalties are depending on the structure and how much I invest and how much the author invests in the work. Um, but typically most contracts are up to 50% uh, net royalties. And now I'm done. Did I go 10 minutes?